That continues until you start to have inflation. Then they tighten monetary policy, and then it,、uh, and then the economy weakens, and it goes into the next recession. In today's video, Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, discusses where we are in the changing world order, the macroeconomic outlook, and the rising tensions between the U.S. and China. Three big things. That I observed happening,、uh, that didn't happen in our lifetimes, but happened during the 1930 to 45 period, and they are the creation of enormous amounts of debt and the printing of money to pay for those debts, and it having its economic effects on inflation and growth. The second is internal conflicts.、Um, Over the largest wealth gaps we had since then,、uh, values gaps,、um, and the rise of populism of the right and the left,、uh, those conflicts again largest since that 1930-45 period, and then <clears throat> the rise of a great power、uh, producing a great powers conflict internationally. Um, with the rise of China as a great power,、uh, challenging the United States and、uh, with Russia, so the great power conflict that also is the、uh, most that that's happened since the, the Great Depression. So because those three things <clears throat> are happening now, and、um, I didn't study them,、um, I went back and I needed to study the cycles, the, what's happened over longer periods of time. So I studied. The last 500 years, because these big cycles、uh, take about 75 years, and give or take about 50. So, um, and um, you know, like the rise and decline of the British Empire, the rise and decline of the debt, and that dynamic I shared、um, in the book, and I also shared it in an animated video,、uh, which is called the Changing World Order. Um, and that creates a, a path. Now, it's not just because they repeat in this way, but one can see the cause-effect relationships that are happening. And、um, so that has pretty much transpired according to script. We can get into those pieces, but I'd say those are the three main ones. There were two others that、um, had big effect that I paid more attention to. Um, that I'll mention. One was、um, acts of nature in the form of droughts, floods, and pandemics.、Uh, they were very disruptive when they happened, killed more people, and、uh, toppled more empires and or orders than others. And then also, of course, over a period of time, there's learning and producing new technologies that raises living standards. You know, it's raised per capita income, life expectancy, and so on, and so.、On. But those five flat. Factors transpire、um, in ways that we've seen before to create this big cycle, and it's、uh, if we can look at the cause-effect relationships.、Um, that's what I want to pass along because I'm 74 years old, and I'm in a phase in my life that I want to pass along the things that are of value, and I think this is an important thing. But yes, it's transpiring according to script. Cassandra, yet again, unfortunately. What do you think is the likelihood of the meltdown of the dollar? Is America going to be wiped out at some point soon? I I, I don't want、um, histrionics. You know, just I, I don't want to、um, overdo it, and I also don't want to just jump to conclusions. My goal here is to show people how the machine works, the cause-effect relationship. So I'm going to answer your question by explaining certain things. Um, the dollar is、um, is held by countries in the form of debt. In other words, when you say I'm holding the dollar,、um, you're holding a debt instrument. And when we have a a problem with the debt instrument, a few problems with it holding debt instruments.、Um, those problems are that first of all, as a result of What the United States was in the world, the largest trading country,、um, the dominant empire, and so on. 
there's been a, a huge um, accumulation of dollar denominated debt in dollars, therefore. And there's also been um, a lot of deficits that had to be funded, which happens by selling dollar denominated debt, which a lot of foreigners and banks and others bought. And so they have a lot of dollar denominated debt. Now, um, if you're a creditor, meaning an owner of dollar denominated debt, you need to have an interest rate that is high enough to, to more than compensate you for inflation. And so um, the production now of a lot more debt and, and them having a lot of debt, and then also sanctions internationally, which means freezing dollar denominated debt, all have <clears throat> created a reduction in the demand for dollar denominated debt. There's also, you know, concerns in the world about some of the things that are going on in the United States, and that's reduced the, that. As a result of that, um, you're seeing more transactions take place in other currencies. Um, and if they tra take place in other currencies, then um, others want to save in those other currencies um, because that's how they pay for it. So if you want to save in what you pay for, you save more in it and less in dollars. And so that's the dynamic that is reducing the demand for dollars and dollar de debt at the same time as the supply of it keeps coming because we have large deficits. So the underlying value that those dollars uh, represent isn't increasing, but the number of dollars spread across that is. Yeah, so that there's a supply-demand issue. That supply-demand issue, by the way, also exists in European currencies. Okay, they have too much debt and they're financed the same way. And Japanese currencies. And so what you're seeing is the movement, all that weight of money and debt is causing prices to go up, inflation. And that's also being uh, worsened um, by the supply chain deteriorations that are due to the international conflict. So, for example, um, in the case of, let's say, China and the United States, um, and other countries, as they prepare for the possibility of war, they want to be self-sufficient. And so, um, uh, as a result, they work on being self-sufficient more than integrated and efficient. And so um, that dynamic is playing an important role too. What do you think the next few years have got in store for us? Um, well, um, I'm going to take all three of those influences and answer it because they're all related. <clears throat> the, um, there's a, a business cycle or a short-term debt cycle, I call it, um, that, you know, sort of recession to recession. And the way it works is you have a recession in weak economy, central banks um, stimulate credit growth, credit gives you buying power you go out and buy the economy picks up um, and then that continues until you start to have inflation then they tighten monetary policy and then it uh, and then the economy weakens and it goes into the next recession since 1945 when the new world order began in other words we had the currency and also the American world order beginning in that We've had 12 and a half of those cycles. We are, they typically last about seven years, give or take about three. And so we are now about halfway through this cycle in which they, um, you know, you, they did the stimulation, inflation rises, they tighten monetary policy. And we're in the phase of the cycle where there's going to be then the cracks occurring and the negative um, impact on economic activity and the like. And it's going to be more difficult than normal because there's so much debt outstanding and, and we're, you know, what we just talked about. So 
that is likely um, to happen over, let's say, the next year and year and a half, which means that it will take us in through the elections. And what we have is a situation where the second of those influences, the internal conflict influence, is bad. And you have a lot of populism. So populists are people who will fight to win at all costs. They're not compromisers. You know, I will fight and I will win for you. And the rules be damned, you know, compromising be damned. And um, so you're going to have a, a political situation in terms of, you know, that kind of environment. It's a bad time for that, but it'll end up paying uh, an impact on the um on the nature of the elections, I think. And then you have um, the international conflict. We are much closer to um, a big conflict, a war of, of sorts, either a sanctions and economic war or even possibly a military war with China. And because of the politics also, that that will be pushing its limits too, because There are um, the one thing that most Americans are united on, and both Democrats and Republicans are united on, is anti-China. And um, as a result, um, you, you know, and they all want a strong man or woman, strong person uh, on that. And so I think you're going to see pushing of the limits there, and that becomes a dangerous set of circumstances. So I think that... Um, If we take the next, uh, you know, let's call it one, two, three years, I think that those are going to be uh, riskier years.